Okay, um, I decided to record this video because um, over the last few days I've had a lot of back and forth um, in some of the comments and some of the posts about my supporting some of the things that the president has been doing. Um, normally I prefer, or I think, or I certainly think I do a better job of communicating when I'm doing it in person in a video or something like this. Um, but I don't really feel that comfortable doing it. Um, someone posted that I must have been, I guess, posting comments about my support for the president because I liked attention. So that prompted me to do this video um, because that's definitely not why I'm doing it. And I thought it was important to just explain why I'm doing what I'm doing um, because there's definitely a lot of people um, that are on Facebook and social media just because they like attention. I hate attention. I love my privacy. I love my anonymity. Um, but I also love my country. And a lot of people have come to hate this country. But if you've ever traveled abroad or if you've ever studied the true history of other countries, you'll find out that um, almost every country in the world had slavery at some point. Some group was enslaved and as time came as time passed we came to see that it, just humanitarian wise as something that was unacceptable and it slowly but surely um, became a less accepted practice although certainly it does still exist in some places today but I do love this country I consider myself a patriot I have traveled abroad I've studied about the history of other countries and other cultures and I happen to like this one personal preference um, and so I'm doing what I'm doing because I really care about this issue. Um, I really care about what kind of elected officials we have, what kind of government we have. I think of government as being a reflection of its people. That's what it's supposed to be. I think that we've come to see it very much as some independent giant big brother or mother or father that's taking care of us. And I don't think that's what it's supposed to be. And I care about this issue. Um, about, I think it's about five or six years ago, I had an, a, an incident where I experienced a case of blatant corruption. Um, it was so obvious that I could explain it to someone in 10 minutes and they'd be able to see that it was blatant corruption. I had seen, you know, and heard of corruption before, but I had never had or experienced something personally like this. So when that happened to me, I set out in search of what I thought was making it right, in search of justice. Um, you know, I first wrote to the agency that governed this particular government um, group and I got back a form letter. They didn't really do anything. They said, I'm sorry, this is not really something that we can do anything about. Um, so I wrote to a few other agencies. I kind of went through all of the process when you have a, a situation like that, reporting it up to all the appropriate people and nothing happened. No one cared. Eventually, I extended that to writing to media and writing to, you know, help groups, you know, social justice, if you will, groups trying to find someone who could help me to make this right. And um, no, most people didn't even respond to my inquiry. They just ignored me. But the few people that did, they were like, sorry, we can't help you. Um, and it was really frustrating and heartbreaking and just infuriating. Like a lot of different emotions go into that when something like that happens. And no one seems to care. No one seems to think it's important. Um, so I was, I, I was really affected by that. And I started when, when no one would help me, I started to just look into it and investigate it myself. I, I figured, what can I do? And I found that there's actually a lot of laws that prevent you from even being able to sort of investigate it and handle it yourself. It's very limited in what's available. Um, so I did what I could. I started talking to people, interviewing people, contacting other people who had been through the process that I went through to see if they had had similar situations. And I was shocked at what I found. Um, not only was this not uncommon, um, it was very blatant and in your face. And so I started to feel like, well, what are we supposed to do about this? If you have a corrupt you know, area of government, how do you fix it? How do you correct it? And as I continued to dig, what I found was that it was so big and so deep that the only way to correct it was to get enough people to understand that it was happening to get them to change 
anything, change the way that they do things, if that's changed the way they elect, if that's changed the way that they protest, whatever it is, just change something, do something. Because right now, I fail to see what I would consider positive results come out of the way that those things are done. Um, and that's when I started to talk to people about these are the things that you can do different. I started asking myself, how do you fix this? Well, if you want to clear out a corrupt agency or a corrupt group, you kind of have to get rid of all of them. That seems like an overwhelming task, but it shouldn't be. When, when you are oppressed by your government and they're so big that you don't know how to get rid of them, you don't know how to make them behave, that's a serious, serious problem. People who are evil will always gravitate to positions of power because that allows them to get away with being evil. Sometimes people think that people become evil because they're in positions of power. But think about that for a second. If that was the case, then no poor person would ever kill someone. No poor person would ever, you know, torture or rape someone. And that's not the case. So when a person that has evil tendencies wants to get away with that, the best way for them to do that is to find a way to be in power. They can pay people off. They can bribe people. They can scare people with their power into just keeping their secrets and keeping their silence. I would argue that that's very much a part of what happened with people like Bill Cosby, people like Harvey Weinstein. They had so much power that even other people with power were afraid to oppose them because they were afraid of the influence that that person had over other people of power that they might need or they might want to work with. So that was my trigger. And to kind of segue into how that, you know, I spent a lot of time writing blog posts, trying to submit editorials, and I just found that I was blockaded at every step of the way. And so I asked myself, most people, they hear a news report and they just believe it. But what if the news is not correct? What if it's not telling you the truth? Um, then what? How do you know that? What if there's something that they should be covering and they're not? And that was the case with my particular corruption case. This was a blatant case. It's institutional corruption, really. People say that there's institutional racism, but what it really is, what you think is institutional racism is actually institutional corruption. I encountered people who had had the exact same experience that I had that were white. They didn't have a lot of money. If there's a kind of privilege out there, I promise you it is green privilege. Bill Cosby, he had green privilege. R. Kelly had green privilege. They got away with what they got away with because they had enough money that people either didn't want to lose their job because he lost his contract or people didn't want to make him mad and get fired and no longer have their gravy train. And people like that tend to be very generous because they control people with their money and their power. So after finding that I just couldn't make the impact that I wanted to make, being kind of quiet and anonymous and flying under the radar, I just finally just kind of went, Either, either I'm going to do everything that I can to help people understand that we have a truly, truly corrupt government um, and we need to fix it. And then I had to figure out how to fix it. Um, and I, my, my, my realization was that knowledge is power. Information is power. And if you know the truth, um, if you know what your government is doing, then you can decide whether or not they deserve to stay or whether they need to go. And a lot of them need to go. I, I think that most people are inherently good. I really do. But people in positions of power, they will terrorize a good person who just wants to live their life. And we have a lot of people that are in a really difficult position. So for example, if you work at a place and you have a boss who's doing something that you know is wrong, illegal, whatever the case may be, and you go to report that to your human resources department or you report that to whoever's supposed to be responsible and they do nothing. What do you do? I worked in human resources for almost 15 years, a little over 15 years actually. And I know how often that happens. You think they're there to protect you, um, but they're, they're there to protect the company. They're there to protect the brand. They're there to protect their revenues and their profits. And you know, God bless them. That's what companies do. But that doesn't help the person that's in a lesser position of power that's trying to get some help. So I knew that that already happened. But what I found was that you have a couple of people who they complain and they're the ones that get fired. That sends a message to everyone else. So then you've got a bunch of people who are not going to complain. They've basically been submitted 
by someone in power and they recognize that they're just the little guy. And I guarantee you people who are listening to this, you've experienced that before. You've had a boss, you've had some situation where you realize that it doesn't do anything, any, do you any good to complain. Um, and as time goes on, one of the things that I did learn, becoming a whistleblower will ruin your life. The more powerful people you take on, the more damage it will do to your life. If you find, you know, I'm going to get some names and kind of post some information. I think when I have a chance of some people who are whistleblowers, they usually lose their job. They can't find another job in that industry because there's other people of power in another company that don't want to hire someone who cares too much about doing the right thing. They just want someone who does what they're told. Um, and so, you know, I've lost a job before for taking a stand for what I thought was right, even though the people, the bosses at the company just wanted me to go along with it. And I wasn't real dramatic about it. They wanted me to lie to employees about a bonus plan. And I just said, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to tell the truth about it and let, let the chips fall where they may. They weren't happy about that. And I was retaliated against and eventually I was fired. Um, and before that, by the way, I was doing a good job. I got praised by everyone. Everything was going great. But when that happened, all of a sudden, nothing that I did was right. And it was all manufactured. Um, you know, I'm, I, I think I'm pretty self-aware. I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. And I had not actually received any complaints about anything that I was doing wrong um, at the company that would give me pause because, you know, I've had jobs where I was not the right fit. And if it, if it turns out that I'm just not good at that job, I will try to find something else and find something where I fit in a little bit better. In any case, I thought the most important part of this video um, and kind of getting to why I supported Trump, I am supporting him because of his policies. I ask people all the time, if you woke up tomorrow and there was no language, how would you know what is a racist and what is not a racist? How would you know that? You would know by how they treated your group. You would know how, by how they treated you. So if you look at everything that a person says, listen, Donald Trump is a trash talker. Now, you cannot like that. But black unemployment is at an all-time low. And I know people say, oh, well, Obama started. Okay, I don't care. I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but let's say it's true. It still continued to get lower under Trump's administration. He didn't do anything to reverse it. He didn't do anything to try to take that away. He just tried to make it better. Why is that a bad thing? People find themselves in a position where they're looking for an excuse not to acknowledge the things that he does that they like. And you know, he signed a prison reform bill. I've heard people talking about how unfair the crack mandatory sentences were for as long as they've been around almost. Now people under this reform bill have the right to go and apply for a reduction in sentence. Why is that a bad thing? Why can people not say, hey, there are things happening that are good for me? And then I ask people, I'm like, what is it that he's doing? Not what he's saying. Because there's a lot of people that support the president that don't like the things that he says. I don't happen to care. But now what is he saying? What is he doing? that is making your life worse? And how is it making your life worse? And that's important to know because if you don't know that, then you end up voting for someone who just talks smooth, says all the things that you wanna hear. That's how you get manipulated. When you're so emotional about an issue, people will tell you everything you want to hear and then they do whatever they want. Nobody wants to be under that kind of control and if you don't recognize it, now's a good time to think about whether you wanna snap yourself out of it. And so I said I could prove to you that I'm right about this issue and that you need to pay attention to what people are doing, not what they're saying, because that's ultimately how you get rid of a corrupt government. You look at what they're doing. Most of the people who are watching this video, you probably don't trust police. You think that they've got a blue wall of silence, that they protect each other. Um, we see a lot of protest about it, a lot of discontent about it. It's a painful thing to have someone with so much power and so much authority that you feel like is abusing that power and abusing that authority, right? Do you really think that the people that we have put in power to oversee police officers, that there's nothing they can do about it? We've been protesting and we'll keep voting for the same elected officials over and over, the same ones who don't do anything about the police officers that you don't trust and the police forces that you don't trust, but you somehow trust them. They're the ones that made these laws. If a police officer is not prosecuted for, treating, for, for shooting someone, it's probably because the legal basis for that prosecution won't withstand and they can't get a conviction because when all of the emotion is set aside, you've got a jury that has to look at the law, they have to look at what the police policies are, their procedures are, what are, are they permitted to do in terms of use of force. And most of the time, the people who are pro protesting, they don't even know what those procedures are. They just feel like 
okay, they did something wrong, but you have to understand police officers have the authority to use force and they've got a split second to make a decision. You don't know whether they felt like their life was in danger or not. You really don't. And regardless if their motivations or the reasons why they felt like their life were in danger were suspect, they still have a right to use deadly force. That's the law. But you keep electing the same people who support that law. If you've got a problem with that, why aren't you holding your city council responsible for revising the policies? You keep electing the same ones over and over. They tell you they're going to do something about it. Sometimes they don't say they're going to do something about it, but sometimes they do. But the bottom line is no one seems to be satisfied with the progress. Why do you keep electing the same people that can make a difference? Because you're trusting the wrong people. When you have a media that highlights every episode of a police shooting, every incidence of a police shooting, and you just feel the emotions of that, but you don't feel the emotions of black on black crime and you get mad when people talk about it, like, well, what are you trying to say? Does that make sense? Does it really make sense? It's okay to be emotional about issues that are emotional, but if you're so emotional about it that you begin to act against your own interests, then you need to think twice about it. And I believe, I, I, I supported something that I called Operation Outcumbent. It was basically about voting in the incumbent, the people who were in office, like literally voting them out, voting whoever was not in office. But I found myself to be so shy and so introverted and so disliking of attention that I wasn't about to go get out in front of a grocery store and hand out things to people and ask them, do you know about this? Do you know what this legislator's voting records are? Most people don't even know who their legislators are. They just vote for a particular party, Democrat, Republican, whatever their party official will be. And let's be honest, for most black people, it is Democrat. And they vote for that and they don't even know what that person's voting for. You don't know whether they're acting in your best interest. You know what they say, but you don't know what they're doing. This is coming down to an issue of doing what you say versus what you do. And it's also an issue of results. Are you getting the outcome that you want? And if you're not, then either the people that you have up there are too dumb to give you the results that you want, because this is your government. These are your cities. These are your counties. These are your states. If they can't give you the results that you want, then they have no business in office. Either they're not smart enough or they don't care enough and they need to be replaced with someone who does. Someone who cares with their actions, not just someone who cares with their words. And this video is getting to the point where it's kind of no longer Facebook attention span friendly, but I wanted to put that out there to lay the foundation. I'm doing this because I care. I know how to fix these issues and I sat around for about 20 years thinking these are some problems that need to be fixed, but I figured there's all of these people talking about it all the time. Surely they'll get it fixed, but they didn't get it fixed. I don't have amnesia. I know when a problem is not getting fixed. And so I try to find out what people were doing to try to fix it. And if I don't get a satisfactory response after I've investigated it, then I assume they're either incapable or unwilling or un something and they have to go. We have a right to try something different if what we're doing is not working. And I'm inviting people to try something different with me because I can't do it by myself. I don't have to care about this issue. I don't experience a lot of discrimination. Some people say it's because of the way I talk. I don't think it really matters. I'm obviously black. I'm not just black. I'm dark skinned black. So I don't experience that. I don't get pulled over by the police officers. The police officers that I've interacted with have been beyond good. They've been beyond compassionate. And I've had more interaction than I care to talk about, partly because my mom, you know, suffering from mental illness, um, and that causes some interaction. That's a whole nother story that I'll talk about another time. But I've had enough to know, you know, I, I, I've had my car stall out in the middle of the 405 freeway. Anybody who lives in Southern California knows how terrifying that can be. Um, highway patrol, outstanding. Drove around in a car with expired license plates for four years didn't get pulled over. Um, so I don't have a problem with them. They don't seem to have a problem with me. But for those people who do have a problem, first, you want to actually identify what the real problem is. That hasn't been done yet. And then you need to start focusing on concrete actions to take. Most of the protest groups that I see, they don't ever have any specific set of steps that they lay out. They just want it to stop. 
that's not going to work. That hasn't worked. It doesn't work. I have a specific concrete set of things that I've laid out that hold people accountable. Everybody has to be accountable and it holds them accountable for making progress or not making progress. And if they're not making progress, they gotta go. And we need to replace them with someone who can. And we need to keep trying that until we get it right. Tell me what you think. Um, I hope that you didn't find this video too long. Um, and I look forward to your feedback, your comments, and share it if you think there's some value. My next video, I am going to talk about my State of the Union event and why I'm having it, what you can expect to get from it, and why you should be there if you have problems with the way your government operates. Okay? Thanks. Talk to you soon.